Dad, I'm getting wrecked. Can't I buy some stronger units? Your grandfather didn't give his life just so his grandson could pay money to be good at something. Dad, Grandpa's still alive. Son, your legacy awaits. Did you bedazzle Mom's engagement ring? StarCraft II, the legendary competitive game, is now free to play. If that thing's wrecked, I...
gentlemen, we're back at it again here at the StarCraft II World Championship Series, live from Valencia, Spain, as we meander our way on through day number one. I am Nathanius, joined by In Control and Artosis. Artosis, I know you're a big fan of cannons and pylons and all that. <laughs> uh, Shadow, what is group? Wow. Oh, Stage my God, two. yeah. In both group stages so far, doing kind of the same stuff. So, I mean, good on him. It's great to see this kind of get mixed up here in Valencia. I feel like we already have more upsets and closer games than Austin had. Oh, absolutely. In the first, like, three hours. Yep. Yeah. No, some of the big results, like Lambo out of this tournament. Yeah. Uh, to the hands of the Muslim, something that you would not think you would hear, but absolutely did happen. Uh, the Moreno brothers both advanced already past group stage two. So, I mean, it's like one thing to even qualify, and it's like, wow, that's really impressive. But to actually make it even further, there's something in that Spanish paella, probably. Yeah. Right? Maybe just Supercharges them. Yeah. There's a lot, of, a lot of good stuff, a lot of good energy, good vibes for this tournament. Yeah, yeah. Interesting results, I think, uh, has been has been a cool story. And our next matchup should probably be another one of those more exciting, interesting, weird ones. As we're oh, yeah. We're going to see Bly play some though? ZVT. No, is, I, is I think so. I, why? Are you thinking that no, Optimus is... like, what else are we going to say? We're like, this next match should be really boring, pretty plain. <laughs> right? You, you can't say Fair it. enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, but, you know, I think that uh, it's an interesting one in the aspect that Optimus is not performing to the level that... Like, everyone in Europe is kind of like, yeah, he's one of the top Terrans. You know, top three, top five Terran in Europe. Are there uh, more than five Terrans in Europe? Top three? Well, you know, they, there certainly are, but not in Grandmaster League, I think. <laughs> um, but Optimus is, he is a strong player, but where are the results? They aren't yeah. there yet. Mm. They just are not there yet. He's in all the online tournaments. If you mm -hmm. tune in to those, like, you'll see him everywhere, but you don't, uh, he's not the guy that gets to the tippity top. No. Most of the story lately, we, do we talk about you, Thermal, who's been, like, back and forth between Terran and Protoss, but also a Hero Marine. Who's uh, yep, yep. who's one of the we talk about him because he took maps off Cyril in Challenger, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean those are the top guys basically. So can he join those players, or will Bly just continue to be like this kind of underrated aggressive Zerg that gets kind of deep everywhere? In control, how excited are you for a potential Bly versus Shadow match? <laughs> <laughs> the race of cheese there. Um, no, I think what's interesting about this match is that. Bly constantly finds himself in that position where we always talk uh, kind of down about him. We're just like, oh, wow, look at him go. He's winning some games here. But he's been doing it for a while. And Bly, we recently had the stat at WCS Austin, I think it was, or maybe it was Challenger. He's played over 9,000 9, competitive matches online and offline. That's a lot of games. Experience is not a problem. And you, you see it when you talk to him here. You're like, Bly, how you doing? He's like, oh, yeah, so it's fine. You know, it's good. Like, you're nervous? Like, Pfft. Nervous. <laughs> he doesn't Care know less. the meaning of the word. You know who else doesn't no. know the meaning of the word? Our wonderful host on stage, oh, Smix, wow. ready to introduce our two players to the next match. No nerves up there, Sue, right? Doesn't know the meaning of it, though? Absolutely none at all, Nathaniel. And thank you very much. Stone I think pole. you're wonderful, too. Thank you. Well, thank you. someone does it. I do have nerves. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, it is time to introduce the players for our next match. It is the designer match of, of Group F. So please welcome up on stage. It is Optimus and Bly. Fly versus Optimus, some more Terran versus Zerg to whet your appetite here at the World Championship Series. Optimus in his fourth live WCS event. We know that Bly has made the finals of several WCS events. He is in he is an extremely good player. He has mm -hmm. played in damn near everything imaginable since StarCraft 2 well, came you, out. You have to be playing in every single tournament to get 9,000 plus tournament games. Yeah. Yeah. That's like more games than most people ever play. Yes. He's played more tournament games probably than Clem or Rainer have played games at this and point. And he's gotten most of those games done in under six minutes. Two or two, <laughs> which is absolutely incredible. I know, but the interesting thing about Bly in this position is that on paper, he's the more storied, he's the more celebrated and the better player, if you will. But based off his play style, he's one or two wonky choices away, a good defense from Optimus from just simply being out of this group which would be like the 30th upset we've had so mm. far and already just group stage two. It'd be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we get into these weird situations too where 
Bly as good of a player as he can be. Sometimes those builds get a little overly finessed, and yeah. Optimus could find himself in a best of three, maybe squeezing it out if, if Bly is just a little too reckless as well. Yeah, and that would be really nice for Optimus, too. He went out in group stage one in Austin. That was the tough group of group stage one over there. Uh, but if he loses here in group stage two, I think it's just a disappointment okay. for him. Oh, yeah. uh, thank you guys for your feedback. The game Stop. has actually started, so we're going to get into it. Hate to cut you off. I love I, you guys. I, I love it. It's time for Bly versus Optimus. Shut him down. G'day guys and welcome back to WCS Valencia. I am Maynard once again and I've subbed out in control and join with me is Todd. How you doing friend? I'm doing great, excited for this one. Two players that I've met a lot in the past. Much to the favor of Bly who's won most of their encounters and looking to try and repeat that here. It's a very important matchup. All right, and we're going to redshift for game number one in the bottom left from the Hollands. We have seen 10 revolutions Optimus! He's a memer, he's a dreamer, and he's a damn good streamer. Watch him quite a bit. <laughs> and it's up left here with a nice early pull first. This is Team Experts, Bly! The back of a pretty good performance in Challenger. Went out on top of his group. Yeah, and uh actually barely lost to a mana it was a bit i believe in a two and three very close matchup almost made it through uh yeah, to challenger it would have been already in group stage three but now it comes down to that one matchup right there zenster took first place in their group so they have to try and take out one another one of these guys will not be advancing but whoever wins i guess gets an opportunity uh that group stage three to keep on doing well so it's a turn versus Zerg in which Bly is very capable of going, you know, to, up to a lot of bases. Like, we, he always gets this rep as, like, a cheeser and stuff, or like, as, like, a guy that will do, like, Banning Bust, yeah. Road Ravager Rushes. He's capable of that, but he's also very capable of, of taking three, four, five bases going for Broodlords. Yeah. And he tries to play, it's going to sound funny, but a cheesy macro style in a way, where sometimes yeah. he plays very greedy and tries to kind of... Sale that is playing standard, but he actually cuts corners by making less units. I was talking to Uthermal, and he was the one that, that kind of told me about this, where Bly gets more Ravagers than most of the Zergs in the mid-game, and then tries to skip making units for a while, and gets a lot of uh, drones instead to try and go for Broodlords. That well, will have an impact on guy. Actually, does Lynx. What, what is going on here? Four, <laughs> four Lynx rolled up into the natural there from that pull first. Short rush distance here on Redshift, and he just... He got into the main man. The depots were down for Optimus. He got the SCV on that natural command center. It's just and like Optimus is having a much harder time. He's got three SDVs. This is an incredible opening Four. for Bly oh my and a horrifying opening for Optimus. Oh, no, not again. Not again. Don't do it. Don't do it. Uh. All right. At least at least the fifth SCV did not die. But that's still a really yeah. horrible start here for Optimus. It's just like Optimus wasn't microing as well as maybe he could have there. Yeah. Like, it's a bit weird. Maybe the, nervous. The deep, yeah, I mean, he is on stage. He's not on stage often at all. Um, his best performance in the WCS is top 32. But he, he is on stage here in Valencia. We, lo we do love our TVZs. I'm going to address a couple things here. Is that the stage, the, stage, the stage fright is possibly if Optimus. Maybe that's the reason. Yeah. But, of course, Bly is someone that's never going to suffer from that. He's been yeah. on the stage so many times in his life. And also he knows you're casting him and judging him. Like, he's Stan Brethren. So. Yeah, well, Optimus knows him on regularly stream. I sub. Actually a big fan. He's my guilty pleasure. My late night European Terran, <laughs> Terran stream. I get myself a glass of whiskey. I sit down. I put my feet up and I get some Optimus on before the I The nightcap stream. That's the nightcap stream. That's right. And it's not smooth jazz and something classy. It's uh, it's some memes and some pretty thick builds. <laughs> Sounds a whole lot better, to be and honest. A, and a chat filled with some of my favorite European pro gamers who just sit there and support him and <laughs> have a good time memeing along with him. It's a good time, man. Do check him out on stream. He is a, he is a, he is a great streamer. But we have ourselves... I mean, I have to address the, ch the, the elephant in the room here while I have a bit of a lull in the action, and that is that we're on redshift for game number one. Yeah. Normally, Zergs are not going to want to play Terran on redshift because of the weirdness of this map, but Bly is a different kind of Zerg. Optimus is going to be pretty happy about this map. Looks like he's going to drop a couple units and try to save this Hellion. Doesn't get it in time. Yeah, everything's going Bly's way, it feels like, so yeah. far, starting with those SCV snipes here in the start of the game. Sorry, going back to the point I was making earlier, Bly is one of the Zergs that later in the later stages of the game before reaching rulers might try to cut some corners make less units and try to make his army appear bigger than it, than it actually is by getting more ravagers 
mm. instead of his army. So when you first look at it, it might look very impressive, but in fact it might not be as impressive as it actually is if you were to attack and try and fight these guys. I mean, provided you don't let the corrosive by land on top of your army. These run bys from Bly. I mean, the first one was just slowlings. This one with speedlings is still a big pain in the pain in the butt here for Optimus. That's another big ling flood here into the natural. And considering Bly keeps getting damage done every time he does it, it's no re no wonder why he keeps doing this. Yeah, a lot of SCVs in that natural going down here. Optimus, no gold base to fall back on, no third CC. So this is a lot of damage here. He's been knocked down to 22 workers. And Bly is such a momentum-based player as well. Like as soon as those first things got in, he knew that all of his damage later on would be coming as well. Attacks with more and more links, snipes, SCVs, gets a tank and some more Marines. Jeez. Optimus is looking like he's in a league below Blyce right now in this game so far. He's folding like origami to the Ukrainian Zerg's aggression here. Just links getting damaged on every time. That time, even though there's a lot more links, I feel like he did a lot more damage. A lot of SCVs going down the tank, like you mentioned. That's 150 minerals and 125 gas in the toilet. And this Liberator is going to want to kill a few drones at least here. As he's, Bly is making a lot of roaches, and that's not defensive. I think this is because he's going to try and end the game shortly. Yeah, uh, Optimus, this is like a nice counter-attack, but Bly reacts quickly enough here, makes sure it, he doesn't lose any drones just yet. And 11 more roaches, 3 Ravagers here. Bly producing a lot of units right now. Needs to defend against this guy, though. Oh, those Queen's already kind of low. Uh, just gets out of those those piles there, and oh, actually piled one of his own roaches. Bit of a mistake there from Bly. This liberator is actually putting in a fair bit of work for Optimus. He's keeping his army at home. The roaches are uh, charging across the map, giving Optimus more time to get more tanks out. He does only have the one factory uh, tank production here, which is a little bit thin. Stim only halfway done as well. Not too many Marines out for Optimus. No Marauders at all. So his ability to fight a roach army is very, very uh, unconvincing. I would say at the moment. Yeah, but if you can reach that critical mass of Marines, have Medivacs as well, Steampack, Combat Shield, and like a few tanks, you're going to be able to do well. But yeah, before that, it can be scary, but I think since Bly is not going for something like a Nidus and like a massive attack, for now, Optimus should be okay. And Bly just made a bunch of overlords there, so plenty of supply cap if he wants to make an army or if he wants to make a big, big, big ball of drones or needs the bigger fighting force. And it looks like drones going to be the, the choice here for Bly. Starts to round out some more of those roaches. So Roach Ravager is pretty powerful, but it does start to taper off when the medevac count of the Terran starts to get up there. You need something yeah. you got to deal with the medevac. So Hydras or, you know, Mutalisks sometimes even are thrown out here with roaches, but generally it's going to be a Hydralis den for Bly. He has had that lair for a while, but going to rely very, very heavily on these roaches. In fact, he's going straight into a hive here with the infestation pit going down. And usually you would want to start that quiz spread earlier towards the gold base, but Bly is going Roach and Ravager, so he's a lot less scared of some sort of like big army attacking him there with siege tanks as well, especially with the way he's been doing so well in the game. I mean, already, Maynard, look at this supply, a huge lead for Bly, despite yeah. for Roaches, this is unusual how much army he's got in comparison. 81 well, to 41. Stim is done now for Optimus, he hasn't quite got combat shield yet, and 1-1 one, one is only halfway done. The Roaches are a little bit a little bit dishonest with how, how much they can be effective in high supply count. Obviously 90 supply, but being up a 50 army supply in Roaches is a big, big deal. But Roaches aren't super supply efficient. Let's see how well he can do here into that natural. The army of Optimus is out of position to set that third CC on the low ground. Attempt to drop here from the Dutch Terran, gets deflected from Bly. And he is continuing to do more damage, eight more SCVs go down. Yeah, that, that drop oh! maybe it's going to get shut down as well. Oh, just the one bile, thankfully. I thought it was worse than that. And he's losing Supply Depot now and not mining from that second base. Bly with a great counter-attack and keeping enough units back at home to defend on multiple fronts as well. He's just doing great all around here in this game. Now Optimus isn't controlling this army right now. It's on auto-attack, so it's hitting those Queens, not hitting any of those drones. And they three of them have gone down. Meanwhile, more SCVs are dying for Optimus. There we go, controlling that drop. Heading towards that, that drone line for a little bit there. And he's just going to tap out. Bly has done too much damage on the other side of the map. And Optimus gets dismantled. Bly with a very cheeky <laughs> grin. <laughs> That's a happy Zerg player right there. Yeah. And that is a guy that picks Redshift and intends to play ZVT on it his own way. <laughs> <laughs> Did not even need the hive, which he has yeah. started at, by the way. Like, he was planning on going to Brood Walls, I'm sure, eventually. He didn't even need to get there. And like I said, Bly is a very momentum-based player. If he can squeeze in a few links here and there early on, start to do some damage, he will know how to use that to his full advantage, keep up with the attacks. And that's exactly what he did. Kept on attacking the whole time. But smart attacks, you know, just enough links and at the right time, getting more SCVs. That tank pickoff was huge as well. 
Yeah. So much cost efficiency with those earlier lings managed to get that giant roach force up. And once again, like roaches don't aren't a great army. Like if you just have a bunch of roaches against a guy that has bio and tank, generally bio and tank can be down in supply but still win the fight and still have even bio and tanks left over in the end. They just do that so that that well against the Bly, He did so much damage during the start of that game and even in the mid game that it was hard for Optimus to have those upgrades and to have that right army composition and even the right amount of units there in an army composition to actually fight. So he did overwhelm and every time Bly attacked he just did damage. Oh that might be where that thumbs up is going to that fanboy right there with the Bly on fire. Hashtag <laughs> I hope that we see uh, some ceremonies, actually. You know, Fear Dragons competition is going. Yeah, reminder out there to all you guys in the pro game area that might be listening to this cast. I mean, obviously, we've they had... They watch without we've, sound, we've, we've, just had, in case. We've had, our, we've had Showtime and Neeb on stage, which I'm not expecting to win that prize. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, I think Optimus could maybe go for something cheeky if he ends up coming on top of this, in, on, this uh, on the stage here. But Bly wins Bly, and he goes a backflip on stage. <laughs> and Bly is the kind of guy that would do a pretty sick ceremony. I'm kind of rooting for my Australians out there in the player pool. I'm not sure how they're doing at the moment in group stage two, but I would imagine there'd be an Australian victory if they, if they managed to win on stage because they are pretty damn good at celebrating. What do you think they would do? Well... I mean, maybe a cartwheel, maybe a dab, maybe something meany. A dab. Maybe, some, maybe a maybe Aren't a Aren't you disqualified if you do a dab? <laughs> Why, oh, no one's done anything else. If, that, if that's the best thing we get, then that's the best thing we get. All right, we're getting into game number two here between Optimus and Bly. Can the Dutch Terran fight back? And the bottom left, Haley from Holland. This is Team Revolutions, Optimus. Really nice guy in the top right here. Speaking of nice guys, this is Team Experts, Bly. Lost and found one of those great maps. A lot of people love to play on it. I don't know what Bly was looking at just then. <laughs> <laughs> someone was coming at him from a knife on the side of the stage. He's like, whoa. That's, uh, looks like he's just fine. He didn't get stabbed in the end. He's continuing to make drones and everything looks pretty regular. Give us the Manasteria for a second, but uh, yeah, but Bly looks so good that game one. It's, like I said, you know, like Bly is one of those guys that has been around forever. It feels like sometimes his Ooh. style shouldn't be as effective as, as it is, but it really is. And he keeps on posting results and on getting better. He's one of those guys that's always very confident and it really shows in a lot of his games. Optimus is checking with this, uh, this early SCV here, if you guys are wondering what's going on. He's looking for a potential proxy hatchery or a drone. There is the occasion, I guess, though, uh, this is a sign of Optimus probably playing the player more than the matchup right here. Sort of expecting, well, maybe he's faced Bly on this map before and yeah. Bly has done that early roach warren and, you know, done those proxy roaches. And this is the usual, it would only be there if you don't check for it. <laughs> and <laughs> it's rather right. you check for and it. And then you low ground it. CC and you just tap out. <laughs> you see those riches show up and you're like, well. Yeah, pretty much. Well, damn. And we got just a pretty regular Reaper expand here from Optimus. He's just got the one gas so far. We'll see what he goes into if the second barracks goes down or if the uh, the factory comes up. At the moment, it's kind of looking one 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 -y. Yeah, after what happened last game, I hope he's extra careful here with that, that one Reaper. Like, obviously, the... Getting the Marine right after this can help a lot as well, but if the Reaper is not in position to receive those things, it makes it a little bit tricky. You have to micro perfectly, you have to react on time, and last game, it, I don't know, it just felt a little bit off from Optimus, the way he was microing and, and reacting a little bit slower. He lost four SCVs. Yeah, it's like the first four Lings. Speaking of the first four Lings, here they come again. Doors open again. In they come, SCV's been pulled off the line. Now, I don't know if he'll be able to get any kills here, but this is, of course, still damage. He, he is he's yeah. denying a lot of mining time or a good chunk of it. Nearly all the stages that really kind of spirals out of control. He's also delaying this command center. Yeah, the Reapers come back now. This is how you're meant to defend this. You're not really supposed to lose any SCV if you do well enough. Like, obviously, you'll lose some mining time for a little bit. That command center on the second base is not going to go down as fast. But remember that Zerg sacrifices some economy by making those fallings instead of making drones early on. So it's fine. Is it, though? <laughs> well, this link's what pretty was that, good. SCV? Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's gotten, gotten rid of it. So that Reaper's gonna head across the map here and see what's up in Blytown, see what he's going for as his next step. Bly's just continuing to just spread creep. He's not continuing to produce queens at the moment, getting his third up nice and early. And Optimus is going for a very regular 1-1-1 one, one, one opening as expected here. This is something that he loves to do. A lot of foreign Terrans love to do it. Get that starport onto that tech lab, get Cloak, get a Viking, switch into a Banshee, or even just go straight to a Raven if you want to go something different. 
Raven with Hellions is actually a pretty cool unit composition in the early stages of TVZ yeah. if you want to go for it, because you have that mobile creep detection. So not only can you auto turret harass, you can also get rid of some creep shimmers for free without scanning. And Optimus, once upon a time, was one of those Terrans. No matter the matchup, no matter the map, he was going for mech all the time. He tried to make it work for, for a, a very while, long time. Yeah. But kind of had to give up because it just wasn't working, especially if you do it every game. You're just going to get hard countered. And these days, Zergs, they've gotten so much better against mech as well with the Swarmos and all that. So nowadays, we see him play a lot more with bio. I definitely feel like mech is not necessarily impossible, but still pretty unlikely. And one It'd be really cool, though, if he busted it out. Uh, nice control from Optimus there. Loses that Reaper, but the, all the Hellions are still alive, and Bly's lost a lot of his wings. Bly trying for one of his very, very effective run buys, but Optimus has actually locked things down very tightly here. He's done a great job of taking very minimal yeah. damage. Very clean this game with the defense. Ooh, Bly's dropping 18 lings here in a Roach Warren. He's afraid of these Hellions, and rightfully so. I think he might want to try and counterattack as well a lot, because he knows there's going to be aggression thrown his way. And Remember, he's one of those guys that thrives in chaos. We've seen so many games like this out of Bly, where he's being attacked, he attacks at the same time, and he always makes the most of both situations. Always comes out ahead. By a follow-up here for Optimus as Cloak finishes up. That third CC doesn't have a lot of hit points. There's one Marine in this Banshee who got a little bit of work to do, but it looks like they might be able to survive here against these links who really want to target down that low hit point Ooh, structure. If he can save that... He should be able to save it. Oh, it's going to be so good, actually, for Optimus, because Bly cuts walkers to make these units. So now Optimus is on full notice as well, spots these links in the middle of the map, knows he has to keep an off back at home. Lair only now starts for Bly past yeah. the fifth minute. And with this kind of saturation, it's not a very comfortable lair either. Not only is it late, it's a little bit uncomfortable. These worker counts just not impressive. It's 39 drones. The Terran is ahead on workers, and he's about to be on three bases as well. Hellion's yeah. heading to the third. Oh my god. No units in position. The drones are lining up. It's a barbecue. Six drones die here in that location before Optimus ejects out of there. It's really nice as well that he saves all these aliens after doing this damage. No lair, no overseer, no mobile detection means he not only has four crawls to be able to take these cloak banshees. Aliens are coming in again this time to get caught and it looks like they're going to get dispatched with very easily. Yeah, and in the meantime, we got all the important production going on the Optimus side of the map. Double eBay is uh, getting some tanks. Steam pack halfway through done. And he's adding on more gases as well. And Already having the third orbital as well is huge because not only is he, a, is he ahead on SCBs, he's going to have triple mule yeah. used on that third base here momentarily. He knows that Bly is already going to uh, Roaches, I believe, because he saw some of them while his Hellions were dying. So he can kind of know what to expect and how, to, oh, how, fast, how fast he wants to play. He can kind of decide on that already right now. And with these Banshees out, he's actually very, very safe against Roaches. He doesn't need to just rely on a bowl of bio units to deal with them. And Bly's like, well, I don't have Roach speed. These are out of position, so... Well, <laughs> these aren't going to do much. Yeah, Bly was smiling at the end of the previous game. I tell you what, he's not smiling right now. Just yeah, Optimus, units in Optimus is playing a really good TVC yeah. here in Lost and Found. He's, he's, he's made very, very little mistakes. Can we see units lost, actually? I feel like he's, he's traded Ooh. pretty well the entire game, yeah. Yeah. 36 links. Confirmed. Uh, run by attempt here into the natural. Once again, Optimus taking very little damage, deflects it. Uh, there's a hole in the wall, obviously, because he's floated out his third, but it's very easy to plug that. His 1-1's one about to finish as well, and keep in mind that his upgrades are going to be double ahead of the Zerg here. He's just started plus one Carapace. And Bly is heading up to that yeah. infestation of pit again, so in very sort of couple metres ago, EU Zerg fashion, fast hive. Yeah, I feel like Bly is one of those guys that loves going for the quicker hive, and... Uh that will try to get away with it a lot of the time. But uh, here's the thing in this game, like get I out. said, <laughs> get off my lawn. Yeah. He's a very momentum-based player, but he has no momentum so far in this game. Like, he's doing all right, you know, he's not out of it, he's not super far behind, but he hasn't found any damage yet. And Optimus is the one that has the momentum for sure. He's setting up that yeah. third base, defending Ooh. everything that's been thrown at him. He loses a Banshee here, but Optimus can afford to lose a Banshee, whereas Bly really can't take another bad fight here. In speaking of a bad fight, Optimus is loading up a double dropship here with 16 Marines. There's no Banelings anything, so it's just going to be up to the Roaches and also to whatever Bly has left as far as Queens goes to deal with this. He's getting an Infester as well. Yeah, the one Infester. One Infester. Ooh, I'm shivering. What's one Infester going to do, Todd? I don't know if that's a... Uh, I don't know if it's going to make a huge difference. It can, it can lock down things and make defense a little bit easier. It does do AoE damage, of course, but... What's one Infester going to do? The Just same as Steph Curry in the NBA. One, one? <laughs> yeah. Win the game on his own. Uh, that's a lot of roaches coming up into the main base. So it looks like Bly will be able to force a lift up. There we go. 
And keep in mind that 2-2 two -two is on the way here for Optimus, so the yeah. upgrade advantage on those double Ebays is, um, is going to get bigger and bigger here. And That's really scary, actually. When yeah. that completes, it's going to be such a huge upgrade lead. Optimus with a big supply lead here right now, trying to still make something happen with some of his forces. On the other side of the map, Ultralis Cavern. Look at how fast it's, this Ultralis Cavern is. Insanely quick Ultralis Cavern. Can Optimus Cavern. even read into this? I think he might well, have seen the hive while it was morphing in the main base, but uh, other than that, did he see that? Uh, I don't think he... He did see okay, the hive on the way, so he knows something's coming, and he didn't see a spire, so he I'm, probably knows that it's going to be Ultralis. Yeah. Usually you would want to hit that timing anyway when you hit the 2-2 two -two upgrades, but is it even going to be fast enough? Because those Ultras well, are going to be fast I mean, in the game. The, the Ultras are going to be fast, but uh, this Viking is very bold, but so far it's doing all right. Optimus has got this big move out, and Bly's got his Fortune always favors set. the bolts. It certainly does, and Optimus has a big army supply advantage. Fungal going down there for Bly, but Optimus lifts up those hurt Marines that have been fungled and saves them with that meta back. He's clearing creep on the way through as well. Bly needs these Ultras so badly, and he's not going to have full upgrades for them either, so they are going to be a little bit soft for these tanks and bio units. Nice run by here from Bly, though. Yeah, I think Optimus is reading the game perfectly right now. He knows he has to press forward, setting up a huge siege with a lot of these tanks, getting in there with the Marines as well, trying to do the critical damage right now before the Ultras are out, and he knows that they're going to be coming soon. His army is so much better than Bly's right now. Bly's got a lot of lings, he's got a bunch of roaches, and that is just not a great force here against these tanks of fire. He does have infestors, but that, without the Ultras to combo up, which are about to pop, by the way, that was an Ultra just killed there in that egg. Yeah, Bly, he's trying to kind of stay alive here for a little bit. If he could get just like a couple Ultras here, he's got some transfusers are available. Not that many Roaches and Ravagers to do the damage behind, but as long as he can keep the Ultras alive, he might be okay. Ooh. Trying to push this back, Optimus losing a lot of army right now. He's going to go for the hot pickup and escape. And he did take a bad fight there in the end, but I actually think that this isn't terrible for Optimus still. He still has a fighting chance. He's got that fourth on location. Ghost Academy's on the way, Liberator production as well. And keep in mind that his upgrades are quite good as well. So that Planetary is going to knock back those Lings, and he saved a lot of his army. So. Yeah. The upgrades for uh, Bly are terrible, by the way. He only had plus one carapace, now he's finally got plus two. Yeah, which means the, the Lings are quite weak, the Roaches are quite weak. Like, they just don't have a lot of DPS. But the Ultras basically. are tanking. They're yeah. beefy. They're tanking, but they just don't do a lot of damage output. These Terran units are getting armor upgrades as well as offensive upgrades. And when the Liberator Count gets up there, he still has double factory tank production as well, by the way. I still feel a little worried for Bly here. Yeah, that, that attack by Optimus on the right-hand side, I'm not sure if Bly is ready for it, but that could do a lot. I think it's a, they too many Vags. <laughs> he's ready. Nope! <laughs> Two Ultras there, even without attack upgrades, and not something that Marines want to tussle with on their own. Ghosts are on the way here for Optimus. Another run by attempt here. That is still a planetary. Bly just checks to make sure it's still there. Bly has a lot of gas income, actually. Like, he always saturates those gases very fast on his newer bases, so now he's on eight with that fifth base, or like the one that he lost earlier, about to be retaken. Okay, no, he's about to be on eight. I think now we take that in advance as well. And if he goes up to 10, that's when it gets really scary to play against the Zerg with 10 gases, especially when they go into Brutalords, which I'm sure we're going to be seeing here as the Spire is now on the way. Adrenaline Clan's being upgraded as well. And he's going for the melee attacks too. Yeah, and about time as well. He's got this, these Lings and Ultras really need to benefit from these, those uh, double upgrades. Adrenal on the way as well to make those Lings stronger, but without plus one attack, they really just don't kill Marines that fast with plus three armor. These Ultras are, funnily enough, keeping Bly alive in this game and also giving him a fighting chance. The, this is a nice drop location here from Optimus. Late reaction for Bly, gonna lose a bunch of drones. Oh, Bile's catching a medevac though. Kind of a two and fro, uh, big, big fist fight here between Optimus and Bly. Or oh, the Medivac? Yeah, yeah Medivac's gonna go down, the, the, the Marines go down as well, but they kill nine drones. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Yeah, that's pretty good. And Optimus, of course, has about as much SCBs as he wants here. He's just at that point where you make a bunch of command centers, you start to get a bunch of orbitals out, you spread out your planetaries, and just get a big ball of ghosts, which is just happening here from Optimus. He's got five ghosts at a time coming out of these barracks. And that's an army that Bly does not want to see as he heads towards Broodlords and Vipers. Yeah, Corruptors are very well timed here. Before the Greater Spire is finished, so he's going to be able to start the Broodlords immediately when he wants to. He's going to help, obviously, against Medivacs and Liberators. So Optimus still finding some damage here onto that drone line. Sniped a bunch of the Twins. As well. And now the Liberator is left to kind of do what he, what he wants up until this. And then it goes, but so does 10 drones. Run by here from Bly, though. Let's see if he can do some SCV damage as well on the other side of the map. And not super convincing here. He is going to get a... Oh, nearly gets a ghost. Saves itself by cloaking. Jabated. <laughs> what a memer. 
Oh, that's a lot of ghosts. This army is extremely scary from Optimus. He's up in the army supply as well, which is a situation the Zerg doesn't want to have to deal with. He has a couple of Vipers out, which is going to be nice against these tanks. He has some Corruptors out, which is going to be nice against the Liberators. But what is his answer to these ghosts? Yeah, if you look One at the investor is not enough. You think that the crease threat is nice, and, yeah, yeah, and it is, but it's such a short rush distance that with two scans, he will have removed all of those creep tumors. And then that's when it becomes tricky for Bly to actually fight without <laughs> the creep there and the vision. A double ultra with three roaches run by a very vintage here in ZVT. It's not, not normal at all. Hey, it's not doing too bad, I think. Yeah, it's actually uh, a little bit tough to deal with. Bly with his oh my God, very he's trademark those style. Yeah, he's hugging those SCVs to death. Optimus is concentrating on the attack, though. These Liberators are coming out trying to fend. But he could potentially end the game in this army. Optimus is going through! Massive focal from Bly! Could make the difference in this fight here. The Ultra is closing that distance. There's the mass knives from, from Optimus on those Overseers. Oh my god, and the, these Vipers didn't even cast any spells, I think. They're just gonna die. It's, I don't... Yeah, there wasn't even a Sniper on EMP. No, he just targeted them down with his Ghost and Army, and they just died right there and then. No Blinding Clouds, no Parasitic Bomb. Oh my god, this Ultra is cuddling this main to death. Eventually it goes down. Blast still losing a bunch of drones the other side. Optimus really mitigating a lot of that damage. He didn't lose too many SCVs. He's still only one worker down on the Zerg even after this harassment. Yeah, Optimus' army is still looking very scary. He's gonna pull back to try and regroup after he's finally cleaned this up here on this side of the map. Resaturating that one base over there. Down to 65 SCVs. He's actually still producing SCVs out of all of his command centers right yeah. now. And um, he's ahead on the walker counts. Bly stuck on eight gases, losing that very important fifth base. Yeah, and I feel like he might want to get some more investors here as well. Maybe some, ba maybe maybe more Ling Bane, because the ghosts are really need to be taken seriously here. The ghosts can not only EMP the investors, they can also snipe down the overseers, the ultralisks, the broodlords. They're all quite weak to this army composition of Optimus. Now the ghosts don't have a ton of energy, though. At least that's one thing yeah. that Blaz got going for him. He's gonna attack from the left side, actually, that 12 o'clock position here, where there's not much creep there. Sending in a little. Gets an investor. Yeah, that's actually pretty it's nice. Actually quite, quite good. Those investors actually haven't, haven't been very impactful. That first one got sniped pretty quickly. Advanced and advanced ballistics, yeah. yeah Being added on now. Now this army is so tough for Bly to beat without any investors. Uh, he has the one investor with a bunch of energy and not a bunch of Bly. He needs, uh, he needs Vipers, he needs Blinding Clouds. He has a couple of Vipers, I'm pretty sure. Or he did. Oh, he lost them. He lost them. In the previous fight and never remade them. Uh -oh. And he didn't even micro them anyway. Well, the Broodlords are coming forward here. There's no Vikings from this, but he does have cloaked ghosts. <laughs> Down go a couple of those Broodlords, easy peasy. <laughs> Even getting a nuke here right now, he's Optimus, feeling very confident in that game. He's going to be forced back here for a little bit, but not before doing some damage here onto that base. He's going to get the hatchery as wow. well. Wow. Bly's economy is in shambles at this point. <laughs> but Only one of these guys is real. Spot the <laughs> intruders. One of these things is not like the other. This, this Marine just tagging on that base there, so Optimus obviously perfectly aware of it. The Marine will not be able to DPS this base down, even with his plus three attack. Optimus is being so patient as well. Like, he could have taken that fight and then replaced his army, but he's like, you know what? I'll keep that army count alive, make sure that I build up a little bit more of a bank before I finally fight with my army, especially if it's going to be maybe a non... Not necessarily the most cost-effective fight. Because on, on the other side of the map, that's where it's really scary. Obviously, huh. you know, against the Broodlords, potential infestors, and you can't see your opponent's whole army the whole time. Our first nuke here from Optimus. Pleased to see it's not on his own army. It's actually going on a hatchery to the south here of Bly. Gets can, I, can Bly see it? Okay. He sees it, yeah. He spotted it. Stay in that extractor. Rip. rip. <laughs> <laughs> Stay home. Get yeah. under the table. Yeah. Get on the table. Curl, curl up into a ball and pray that the nuke doesn't radiate you to death. That ghost gets dealt with here and pulls away some drones from Bly and anything like denying mining time, keeping the drone count low, is going to secure Optimus a win here in this game. He is still in a very, very strong position. Bly finally starting to get a few more corruptors out, a few more infestors out. That's going to be a bit better of a way to be able to deal with these ghosts. Get the Brutal Lord count up, get the infestor count up. And that's a nice attack here from Bly as well, catching a planetary. The repair a bit late from Optimus and down it goes. Eight reaction here, gonna pay the price for that, using that very important orbital. Can that drop do anything? You can get some corruptors. Yeah. Totally no, unimpressed. Not, not here. really, yeah, not really anything, to be honest. Not anything relevant. If, if you get a great Aspire, then great, but other than that. Nuke to the south here. Ooh, can he, he has the vision. Yeah, look at the red dot, it's on top of the gonna land. Still spotted it. Ah! Oh, just Ooh. missed landing. There's a split second there. 
All right, that's well, that's a lot of ghosts. Yeah, see, the thing is here, yes, he deflected that ghost. Yes, he deflected this drop, but does he deflect this army? Magic 8 Ball says Outlook Grim for Bly here. He is in big, big trouble. So many Liberators, bunch of ghosts as well with a lot more energy. Yeah, they're gonna synergize so well. It's super hard for Bly to actually engage into this army there. He, kept, he keeps on being sieged at his bases. Every time it's the fifth base, whether it's on the left or right side, and some very important snipes consistently. Oh, a cloak? Nope, not in time. Uh, catching some ghosts here, and Bly is doing a lot of damage. But again, the big story is, does he stop this army from Optimus? EMP's going down there on the Infestors. Snipes on the Brutalists as well as the Ultras. Down go the Ultralists for Bly, and his army is very flimsy. Optimus is chasing, sniping him down. The Infestors have a little, couple more fungals here. Catching a few of those ghosts. Yeah, Optimus is cleaning up Halsey on, this side, on the other side of the map. After a very rough first game, in the second game, very clean with the defense the whole time, non-stop attacks on the most important basis of flight, uh, of life, sorry, throughout, and then eventually here, the, this push of doom, like a, just unstoppable. Yeah. Liberators in well, kind of covering the ghosts, and the ghosts non-stop landing snipes on EMPs as well, and Blight just not able to hold on. Uh, another brood Lord goes down here. Bly's trying to morph some more, and he does get a couple more. These ghosts are actually very low in energy. Snipes go down on that Ultra List. The EMP is the Infestors as well. And it looks like just straight up Bayer is going to win the game here with those Liberators as well. Bly is going to have to tap out. He is taking too much damage from Optimus in this game. The Dutch Terran fighting back, and he is going to tie this one up a one apiece here. Bly is just trying to hold on. He has that fighting spirit. And there's those mules. Get out of the game. Optimus with a 1-1. And Bly is humbled here on stage. Will he win this series? Not without a fight here. Optimus has got a thing or two to say about that. Not going to be smiling too much after that mule landed. <laughs> I'm quite sure. Never a pretty sight when you're facing it. Cheeky Optimus mule. Cheeky, cheeky, get out of the game mule. Showing a bit of that style hey, on Bly, stage here. Bly did stay quite a, bit, quite a long time in that game for sure. Uh, he is, he, he's got that fighting spirit. He does have those later GG timings. He's one of those yeah. players that, you know, even as a, you know, it's easy for us, right? Because we have the numbers, we see the supplies, we see exactly what but the army is are coming up against him. Even without that, I think like some players, they just use that time to reflect because they're still in the game. They, they can still kind of look at the map and all that, and they reflect on where, where did things went wrong. So they give themselves the time to really think because you don't have time to watch the replay in a tournament like this after, no. after each map and all that. So it's kind of their way of doing that. By staying more in the game, they pictured all the fight that happened and they try and figure out in their head where they really went wrong so that they can fix it for the next game. That's why I really feel like sometimes you're going to see pro gamers stay a, a little bit too long in some of those games when it feels like they just can't win anymore. And it feels like that, and it always seems like that on paper. And these players will very, very, very rarely mistakes, make uh, giant mistakes on this level to be able to lose a giant advantage like what Optimus had in the end of that game. Yeah. But there is always the chance. So that fighting spirit can come into, a, into your favor in the end. Bly has played, we keep talking about it, so many tournament games that he knows when he is out and when he has a chance. This is a big match here. Remember, guys, the winner will advance on to group stage three. Yep. Then... Uh, more We're points, our, more money. Yeah, all challenger players finally coming to play from that group stage three. It's going to be really interesting. Bly was so close in challenger. A two and three against Mana. Yeah. Kept him out of it. And Bly is one of those players that, you know, you kind of, a, a lot of the community would have counted out there in challenger. Like, yes, he is a workhorse. Yes, he's always there. He's always shocking. He's always dangerous. But does he go that deep in tournaments? Generally not. He's had some very, very tough finishes, but it's been a little bit of a while here for Bly. Let's see how he does here, if he can advance by getting through Optimus in game number three. In the top left here, it is the Dutch Terran. This is Team Revolution's Optimus. And in the bottom right from Team Expert, the Ukrainian Zerg, this is Bly. What up, Valencia? Beautiful city, beautiful crowd, beautiful people. I'm happy to be here. Great weather as well. I'm loving it, man. It's exactly like, a, like summer in Australia, where I'm from at least, in my, uh, in my home state. Very dry heat, not too hot. Bad, I know a lot of you guys out there are like, oh my God, I can't believe you said that the mid-30s is not too hot. I'm Australian, <laughs> it's 
It's it's okay for me to say that because I'm just so used to it my whole life. 30 odd years I've been living in and Australia. And also it's good that we can do without the snakes, spiders, crocodiles. There, there are less snakes and spiders here in Valencia, I will yeah. agree. I haven't seen a single one yet. So it's like hot weather. But what it am feels I like, saying? It feels Some like kangaroos something. would be nice, but... Yeah, maybe a drop bear or two, a tumble brush, you know. <laughs> so then it would just feel just like home. If I can't ride my kangaroo into WCS, then it just doesn't feel right. I guess I start the cast on a bad foot. So game one, we had Bly with the Lynx doing really well early on. Game two, Optimus defended perfectly throughout the entire start. What do we see in game three? Does Bly even attempt that? Yes, he's again going for the same four Zerglings yep. that he's done so well in game one with. Does he maybe try for a different timing or does he go for the same thing and hope he can micro better and hoping that Optimus maybe makes a mistake? That'd be a long shot, I feel like. Well, and again, he's trying it, so he must have some sort of belief that it, this could do well. Well, the other side of the coin is if Optimus wanted to go for one of those proxy Rax plays, it really shuts it down, that early pool, with the early gas as well. Yeah. Like, you can go Roaches if you want. Um, you can just get it at a you know, quick speed. In fact, Roach Warren's coming up here from Bly, and that is very early. Yeah, yeah. And out of Bly. This is sometimes there are some Zergs that make it, and you're like, oh, yeah, defensive Roach Warren. And out of Bly, you're like, oh, red alert, ring, yeah, ring the alarm. That is a naughty Roach Warren. And Optimus instantly comes home when he sees the timing of that hatchery. He knows that it's a pull first here. Probably says an expletive in his brain here as he knows he's going to have some links to deal with. Once again, the door is up, uh, or down, rather, and the links are in, but they at least haven't killed any SCVs just yet. Just denying a bit of mining time, and that Marine yeah. is being body blocked. The links are not locked in there with the Marine. The Marine is locked in there with them. <laughs> That's the way Bly sees it, at least. Good micro, actually, using the SCVs to kind of block off and threaten the Zerglings, making sure he keeps that alive the whole time. And once again, pretty clean defense here from Tavis. Really wonder what went wrong in game one, because things went really bad for him early on. Yeah, then again, those links were designed oh, to hide no. this right there, Maynard. That's right. They've been keeping the Reaper at home, and that's a big deal here. Optimus is going to be able to see these roaches with the Reaper very shortly. And when he does, I think we might be seeing a, uh, a Banshee immediately out of Optimus here, because that really does help shut this down. Yeah. Maybe he needs to try to defend on the high ground. Yeah, well. Like on the low ground, it would be hard. Yeah. Bunker going up immediately. All right, going straight into Siege Tanks. That's another way of dealing with it. Siege Tank really does shut this down. Bunkers, of course, help this out as well. He's got to fill that with Marines, hence the reactor on that barracks. Second Bunker. Optimus damn well knows that the economy of Bly is not going to be great here with this. So if he holds on properly, he can get his SCV count up behind this. But Bly, this is actually not an all-in. This is designed to do damage, obviously, but he's droning up behind this. So he wants to do as much damage as possible, kill as many SCVs as he can and behind these drone up and get very far ahead economically. There's a bit of a walk here for these Marines to get in that bunker, and he's starting to bleed out some SCVs. The tank is out, though, and this should deflect Bly away from the main base, but he still has that natural to work with. Look at that SCV. He's doing the dance. He's freaking out! There's so many Zergs! <laughs> <laughs> that supply depot going to go down. The reactor, perhaps, as well. Bly Does using oh. corrosive bite very, very well as he's shooting that command center on the low ground, kind of trying to force Optimus to, over yeah. to overextend in trying and defending it. Oh my god, if he gets this, that... This shouldn't be a kill. It's got, he's got four Biles here, possibly, but it's not too far of a float for the CC to get onto those SCVs. He does damage it, but he does save it in the end. Oh my god, he's going for what? it! What? He's going for Broke! Gets the tank! Uh, he does get the tank, but... Uh, he's gonna prevent mining now for longer as well. Yeah, he's I sniping so. that. Benshi has to come out and kind of chase this away. Optimus trying to go for a counter-attack, but the, I mean, there isn't much to kill here. He has to go for drones, I feel like. Oh. Go in the natural. But he's going for the hatch. Well, it does pull. It is pulling Bly's army back, so he can take his natural. And there is a Banshee with cloak follow-up here for Optimus. So this is something that Bly's going to have to deal with. If you go for the early, early roaches like this, you have to rely on spore crawlers to be able to deflect the Terran. So you don't really have, uh, you know, overseers or anything going for you. It's the layer is only halfway done. I guess that hatchery is going to be damaged a bunch. Maybe down the line he can try and take that out. Maybe Possibly. with the Banshee? Yeah, Maybe that's actually crazy. that's actually a good point. Could be a possibility here for uh, for uh, for Bly. Uh, obviously, it's, you can use transfuse on that, so it's. Ah, uh, you don't really want to transfuse that, that yet. You want to save that for a fighting army or a creep and that sort of thing at the moment. Yeah. See the queens even coming back into the main base. Additional spore being added on around the exit of the natural of Bly there, whereas Optimus is trying to resaturate the second base, trying to get his production going. More barracks going down, making SCVs. Gonna go for the drones here. Yeah, I mean, it's guaranteed damage to go for those drones. The Banshee 2 shotting them down. That hatchery is still quite low. And he's going to play 
He's going to do the do -si do here with that Spore Crawler, getting out of his detection range. He can get some Queens, drop the main base as well. An Infestation Pit already on the way of a Bly. Now that is a very lucky Bile there to get rid of that medevac. He even makes that in front of Optimus' units. It's like, I don't even care if you see it, I'm still yeah. going to go for it. The pressure's on you yeah. because I'm going to go for Hive quickly once again. Yeah. So it's going to be a less than eight minute Hive. What you got? So now in What are you going to do about it? Well, I'd, I'd imagine he goes by a tank and just tries and kills him. It's uh, one of the good ways to deal with uh, Fast Hive. 60 walkers to 38 Maynard. Yeah, that's pretty huge. And this counterattack from Bly is going to do too much here. There's a bunch of fire. Doesn't have Stim, though. So maybe it can actually, uh, I take that back. Maybe it can pick up a tank here at least. Goodbye. Abiru <laughs> Dirci. We're in Benchy. Spain. <laughs> oh, it's <fine>. Adios, amigo. <laughs> ah, okay, sorry. Another Benchy trying to find some damage there. Supposed to have. Imagine you're Optimus there. You got 42 walkers. And you see that hive already well underway. Surely, like, you, you'd be feeling the pressure. Like, does he stay on two bases? Gets as many units as he can. And do a massive attack. Well, I mean, that's a, that's a good play for Optimus, especially when you have those upgrades I lined up. I think he has to. Yeah. Right? He's gonna, he only has one tank, though. Of course, with a couple of tanks being taken out in this game by the Ravages of Bly. Uh, the army of Optimus isn't as convincing as it was in the earlier game. Like it, on Lost and Found, he had one one upgrade. Yeah. He had more tanks. The problem yeah. is the tanks. The tanks that died. He, I think he lost like one or two. Now he has only one with his army. That's like nothing. Yeah, he lost, hey, he lost two, two tanks. Imagine if he had three there. That army would be so much scarier. You see that Optimus has been trading worse than Bly here in this game so far. Bly in true Bly flashing, just always on the other side of the map with a small presence of units. This tank, wrong part of town, mate. Buenas noches. Yeah. I don't know if he thought he had trusters here, but he sent Heroes of the Storm. Just gonna die. And in meanwhile, across the map, Optimus is trying to push. Damage Tatchery. Yeah, actually. That's gonna help. I don't think he can even transfuse and save that if that's being targeted. Oh, no, Fungal the fungals. Mets. Oh my god, the medivac! <laughs> Two hit points on the medivac. Wrong flight path. <laughs> Some turbulent air over here. They take things very, very easy. And there's that very, very fast Ultra Cavern here from Bly. Corrosive now, buys in the sky. That's actually pretty scary. That is. I know you have some scary trips sometimes across the world, but uh, yeah. yeah, that'd be They're not as scary as they are lengthy. And that medevac is, and I'm going to have a lengthy life. Those queens get in range of it. And Bly closes down on the army here of Optimus. Bly looking like he has every advantage here, and he's going to just get the series in the end there. And Bly with that trademark smirk. Takes the third map with a 2-1 victory over over Optimus. It looked a little dangerous for him in the early stages there, yeah. but uh, it was a, it was sort of like a very dominant game one where Bly definitely ruled the game. And game two was all Optimus, and then game three was a little back and forth. Bly with a very strong start with that Roach Rush though. I think the Roach attack did enough for him to behind his be quite a bit ahead and. That was a weird choice, I think, by Optimus to go for the hatchery on the third base instead of drones, because Bly had almost no army on his side of the map. He was just kind of droning up like crazy, but I guess he couldn't have known that. And if, and if there had been units, it would have been the wrong choice. So, very well played by Bly. He continues to impress. He certainly does. And let's get his thoughts on stage with Bly and Smix. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, congratulations, Bly. You're continuing your consistency at these WCS events. You're moving on to group stage three, but it wasn't as easy as maybe we expected. Uh, yeah, it was uh, kind of hard, I would say, because like one map away from going, going home, I would say. So I'm really happy about uh, being able to get to the group stage three, and I hope I'm not going to mess up as I did in games versus Dunster before. So. And uh, speaking of it not being easy, in map number two, we saw that after you lost, you did look quite upset. So what was going through your head at that moment? Were you running through what went wrong? Like, what was going through your head? Uh, I feel like I had this game and uh, I lost only because I had... There, there was a moment when I had investors in control group, but for some reason, it went out. And uh, I could not fungal and... Uh, I got the MP, and uh, I feel like I lost like six or seven rulers for free. And that was the moment when I started to lose the game. 
Well, luckily you were able to pull it back in map number three, and now you're moving on to group stage three. And uh, at every single WCS event this year, you've made it to the top 16. Here in Valencia, there's just so many amazing players. So what are your thoughts overall and sort of expectations? Uh, I feel like it's a lot about uh, lucky group stage three or not. Uh, it's not so much about players for me, it's uh, about uh, matchup. And I feel like if I will uh, get my, the, the matchup I want, mostly, uh, I might get to round of 16 at least. So what is the matchup that you want? I want ZVZ. Ah, so even, you want ZVZ even if it's Cyril? Yeah, sure. I like that confidence. Two-time WCS champion, so we'll see what happens as Group Stage 3 is coming up next. Nathanius, let's head back to you. Thank you very much, Smix. Yes, Group Stage 3 coming up next, but Bly able to take that 2-1 in the face of a lot of ghosts, a lot of Terran. Gentlemen, as he moves on. Yeah, you know, showing some of that late game macro play as well, getting deep, getting into that ultralisk tech and taking apart Optimus, but you know, I, I feel like Optimus did play well, at least. Bly is a really tough opponent, and Optimus made it interesting going to game three, I thought. Uh, game two in particular played very well, but Bly has so many counterattacks, he's willing to do some really cheeky stuff. We saw the early Roach run in that game three, and then it wasn't, as Todd called it, an all-in. It was a uh, an aggressive early move, of course, but he was droning behind that. So it's tough to play against Bly, and he's going to be a nemesis. A nemesis? He's going to be a menace, is the word I was trying to a say. A menace, a real menace. A we can combine those two. I need time in the lab with that, but for right now, let's just call it Menace. It's Menaces, gonna be a, it's yeah. It's going to be a problem at Group Stage 3. Yeah. Uh, interesting that he asks. He wants a ZVZ. I feel like that's a matchup where you have a little bit less flexibility in terms of your builds, but he's just more confident in, in, in that. Yeah, you know, generally speaking, uh, the more aggressive you are as a Zerg player, the more comfortable you are with ZVZ because you have to be able to mix up. You have to be able to attack aggressively. That's why we see sometimes really great Zergs like a, a Macro-esque Stefano fall out to ZVZ every time. Mm -hmm. Whereas someone like Bly, who's known for aggression, he wants that matchup. Yeah, it's uh, definitely an interesting thing to consider. We are going to take a look at the group soon uh, to go over everything that happened in group stage two as we are ready to get to the next phase of the tournament. And, you know, we're going to cruise through these. Tell me what surprises you. I mean, Denver well, getting out with Yeah, later. yeah. Did you? Sorry. Did you guys notice the lights match us right now? Oh my God, someone is I'm really yellow. good at this. I'm controlling them telepathically, don't worry. Yeah. I, you're such an incredible host. But yeah, here we see. Yeah, it, look, Soul going out, I think, Denver. is a little Denver. bit of a surprise. Uh, Denver is good. He's been showing better and better results lately. But Soul is one of the highest ranked Terrans in Europe. He's really strong now. So it's kind of a disappointment for him, I think. Uh, it's a big yeah. disappointment. Wow. He, Massa, too, he actually tweeted out saying this is the most he's practiced for a tournament in a long while. And yet he goes 0 2 in that group. Really tough. Shame. Huh? Clem and Drogo. Vortex not yeah. evil. Yeah. I'm sad we didn't get to see him, but Vortex did take the first series off of Drogo, and they met in that final decider match. So uh, Vortex obviously having a great showing, considering he is less active than basically everyone else in the tournament. Yeah. Yeah. yeah not that for him as we move on to Group C, where Neeb, as we all saw, managed to make his way out. We do not have an updated result for Sword of Verse Showtime. Uh, I did see the result in the chat that Showtime did end up taking out uh, okay. sort of two to one at the end of the day. Nice. So Showtime and Neeb getting out of that group. And then Shadow. Wow. Okay, a laser <laughs> made it out, as we talked about, but Shadow first place. Well, he's actually turning into one of the big stories of the tournament, isn't he? I mean, that's two groups in a row that he won when he wasn't supposed to. And so far, I agree with you. It's just, it's like, it's not that impactful. Making it out of the group is a big deal, but you look at Hate Me and Light, I think Shadone is like the second best in that group. Yeah. It's surprising he took first. If he can keep that going, if he, if he wins the third group, then for me, I start to be like, what is going on here? Okay. And how about this? DeMuslim winning the rematch there, it seems, against TLO as a... Uh our two Terran streamers make their way out of the group. Uh, it's a huge result. <laughs> the Muslim uh, hasn't had this kind of result in a while. Our very own DJ Perplexer kind of went back to get the first hand kind of response from DJ or from the Muslim, and he was shaking. He's so excited. This is a big, big deal for him. He has not left. I mean, he's a StarCraft guy. He's been streaming. He's been playing. He's also always been a professional, but he just hasn't gotten the result. And it's become a little bit of like a, a meme almost in the scene. But for him to beat both Lambo and TLO, two players that are Pretty absolutely sick. phenomenal, that's a heck of a result. Nicely done. Yeah, not too shabby at all. Zanster, we talked about, made it out of his group in first place. Uh, and then, of course, we just saw Bly. Mm -hmm. He's going to be joining him. 
Yeah, it, kind of exciting to see Zanster really delivering. He did make it into a code S, had great games against Maru in his group there. Uh, but we haven't seen too much else out of him. But the fact that he won a very stacked group uh, in, in group stage one and then gets first place here as well, which is another pretty stacked group. Those are three players that we see in that group that could totally be in group stage three. So Zanster, he's feeling it today. Yeah. And then DNS and Harsom, I think, uh, expected in yeah, this group. Yeah. Both very good Protoss players in Europe. Nothing too surprising there. But Hero Marine and Nurcio. Yeah, I think also another expected group, I would say. Yeah, it, it definitely turned out as expected, but I should mention I'm pretty sure that Hellraiser actually beat Nurcio uh, mm -hmm. to begin, and then Nurcio beat him in the final match there. So Hellraiser, uh, this guy continues to kind of put up good games over and over. Yeah, the tale is old as time, though, with that rematch for, uh, for Nurcio mm -hmm. being able to get out. And that's uh, group stage two all wrapped up, ladies and gentlemen. Who's, uh, who impressed you guys the most out of what we've seen in the oh, results wow. so far? Most impressive. Well, I'm, I, I guess the things I'm impressed with, Shadow winning these groups, although we didn't get to see too many of the games, a lot of cannon rushes and stuff, but that's cool. He's, he's winning his groups. Definitely impressed with Vortex doing as well as he did, even though he's now out uh, here. But yeah, those are, for me, those are kind of the really impressive guys. Yeah. Do you Korean want to are able to travel and still win, I think, is, is yeah. a big deal. It's one thing to go over to Korea, crank out 60 games a day and win that first group of GSL, but to also travel back, mm. do it again with the international group, which has a very different meta. It's starting to become clear that he is actually one of the it's best a, and is able to do it. I think that's one of the yeah. biggest stories we have here at this WCS. Our next matchup, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, wow. Protoss versus Zerg. Oh, it's yes. Versus oh laser. yes. And this is such a trolley match, too, because what did the laser take second to in the group? Well, it would be cannon Russians. Cannon, mm -hmm. well, cannon Russians. My mind is really melting right now. Cannon rushes from the Frenchman. Now he's facing, I, I don't think we, it's, it's not fair to call him the cannon rush god, but he's like the second boss. He's the avatar. Yeah. He's, he's, in order to get to the god of cannon rush, you have to go through Hass. Yeah, he's uh, he's like one of those mini bosses. You know, there's a Big save, there's boss, a save point right before and after him. Our and ammunition and health yeah. boxes too. Well. Like they really gear you up for it. Uh, well, Hass is going to come in here fresh, obviously, right? He was seated up there, and uh, I think Hass is like really underrated. Everyone kind of talks down about Hass, but. He is a dominant figure. He has actually been doing better and better as well. It's true, Jeff. Let me tell God, you something. You He's been so full of he is Jeff flying those over numbers, man. for like four or five GSL tournaments in a row. He has gone, played in the qualifiers, and he is beating top end pros in series and taking maps off top end guys. So Hass should not be underestimated. But it's a laser, so. Jeff, your, your final thoughts on everything Artosis just said. Has provides a lot of entertainment. He plays an off-brand game. We know the cheese is coming. We know the cameras are coming. But because nobody else plays that way, he can take maps. But at the end of the day, if it, a player like a laser, is he supposed to drop here? Forget about it. Get get your your silly. Come on, guys. I, You're can't rushing this desk right I, now. I am telling you something. Okay, Hass is underrated, but I I have to agree in a certain way. I called yesterday. I was telling you guys. I'm like, a laser's winning this tournament again. Oh, okay. Yeah. So fair enough. Well, a laser did get some practice having to have Shadow That's in his true. group. So he's, he's not practicing O2 he's, though. He's, like. he's, he's already <laughs> warmed up. You know, you know. We're going to be going to a break. When we return, our next series it will be a laser versus Hass.